SMIC can produce 7 nanometer chips. SMIC hinted that it has started small-scale trial production of its second-generation N plus 1 FinFed process. This was disclosed in response to an investor's question about the progress the company has made in the research and development and production of 7 nanometer products. Before we continue, if you like what we talk about on this channel and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I'll give you a few seconds to do that and then we'll continue. SMIC first announced that it has achieved mass production of the most advanced 14 nanometer process in China in 2019. The process is company's first generation FinFET process and it started mass production in the fourth quarter of 2019. The company deployed the process to manufacture the high silicon Kirin 710A chipset, which was utilized first on the Honor Play 4T and then multiple Huawei products including Huawei Enjoy series, Huawei Nova series and Huawei Y7A series. In September 2020, SMIC investors were told that the company has entered the customer introduction stage of its second-generation FinFET N Plus One process chips. The company started a small-scale production of its N Plus One process chips towards the end of the 2020. Later in October 2020, China's one-stop IP and custom chip company InnoSilicon announced that it has completed the first chip tape-out and testing based on SMIC's FinFET N Plus One advanced process. All IPs are made in-house with one-time functions. Regarding the N Plus One process, SMIC CEO Liang Mengsong revealed at the beginning of year 2020 that the process is very similar to the 7 nanometer process in terms of power and stability and does not require EUV lithography. The new N Plus One process nodes are being called 8 nanometer or an early stage 7 nanometer process. The process is geared towards low power applications. Compared to the 14 nanometer process, SMIC's N Plus One process has a 20% increase in performance. 6 to 3 percent reduction in logic area and 57 percent reduction in power consumption while the 7 nanometer market benchmark performance increase should be 35 percent over 57 percent of all the data are very close to tsmc's 7 nanometer process but in the detailed comparison of performance it cannot reach the standard of 7 nanometer chip but that's not all SMIC is working on N plus 2 process. To put it simply, the N plus 1 process focuses on low power consumption, while the N plus 2 process is mainly aimed at performance upgrades on the basis of the original. By utilizing N plus 2 process, SMIC is planning to achieve standard 7 nanometer chip performance. SMIC will be ramping up 7 nanometer chips in 2023. Since put under US sanctions, SMIC, like other Chinese foundries, had been turning to the global second-hand market in ultraviolet machines and other production equipment such as etchers, vapor deposition and wafer inspection components. Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment Group SMEE technology now has the basic homegrown ultraviolet capability free of US IP to fabricate chips. It is too early to assess just how much of a game changer SMEE might prove to be and what scale SMEE and other Chinese DUV machines may be operating by 2025 at down to 5 nanometer. But SMEE has already defied expectation with its progress in a very difficult area of technology. It is a high probability that SMIC plus half a dozen other Chinese foundries will be able between them to make the vast bulk of the chips China needs by 2025 by meeting the rising demands from China's growing base of fabulous companies designing their own chips. These include High Silicon, Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, Horizon Robotics, Cambricon, Xiaomi, Oppo and ByteDance. By then, if US doesn't lift the sanctions on Chinese semiconductor companies, China may need to counter the threat of tougher US sanctions over the midterm by closing vital Chinese markets to US companies, first of all to Apple and or by cutting off supplies of rare earth minerals, industrial grade battery materials or APIs. Washington faces the jagged problem that its political objectives collide with the huge importance to its domestic chip industry of continued growing access to the Chinese market, whether it's Qualcomm, Applied Materials or Synopsys. Annual revenues of up to $100 billion and up to 150,000 jobs are at stake, as well as vital source for research and development funding. BCG and SIA forecast that the global semiconductor industry will be more than twice its current size 
by 2030 with a revenue of $1.4 trillion and that China will account for 60% of this and build out 40% of the global growth in production capacity by then. As the decade unfolds and moves towards post Moore's Law world shaped by big data, AI and by new chip architectures, packaging and materials, China could emerge as the leader at the post Moore's Law inflection point. It has done so at previous technology inflection points. For example, it has achieved leadership in 5G, in high-speed trains, in quantum communications and big data-driven AI. It certainly had the motivation, capital and human resource, magnetism to attract foreign talent and sheer entrepreneurial energy and ingenuity to do so. It would be unwise to bet against it. What do you think? Just before you leave, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Of course, if you like the things we talk about on this channel. Thank you. Till next time.